that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his son Jesus Christ this is the true God and eternal life Jesus is the true God and Jesus is eternal life so we understand all things in the person of Christ first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16 for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of Christ we have the mind of Christ we have the understanding of Christ we understand through Christ when we look at Christ everything is explained we have the mind the understanding of Christ so the Son of God has come to give us that understanding meaning that the sovereignty of God is not an academic understanding the sovereignty of God is in Christ Jesus it's in Christ Jesus Christ came to the world to save sinners Paul will say of which I am chief and so Paul now says I am what I am by the grace of God meaning that there was no way the chief sinner could have been the chief apostle only grace explains that there is no way a, a killer of the church a waster of the church became the chief apostle wrote almost all of the new testament other than the grace of god hallelujah thank god for grace i thought somebody would shout thank you jesus for the sufficiency of grace i thought i would hear a living amen in christ jesus is by election grace is not by efforts is by election look at galatians chapter 6 verse 15 you will love this one for in christ jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature next verse and as many as walk according to this rule peace be on them and mercy and upon the israel of god as many as walk according to the rule that neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything that is a rule but the new creature peace be upon them as many as have come to terms with the fact that under the grace of god it's not by age it's it, it's not by any qualification a to z is god at work no human contribution whatsoever for god so loved the world not just the church that he gave his holy begotten soul that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life can somebody shout hallelujah so what is in christ jesus is for everybody is for everybody is for everybody nobody is exempted and it says as many as abide by this rule peace be upon them and upon the israel of god so god's almightiness is detailed in christ god's almightiness is detailed in christ let me ask you a simple question let me just ask you a simple question to be sure you're following me what do we have in christ that is for everybody huh what do we have in christ that is for everybody salvation for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not but have what everlasting life so salvation is in christ and it belongs to everybody in fact we can say it like this eternal life is in christ or christ is eternal life and it belongs to everybody no age no societal segments no color no race no barrier jesus is the grace of god made manifest can somebody shout hallelujah so god therefore in his sovereignty follow me carefully now i want to get in some very technical places god therefore in his sovereignty gave man a choice part of the sovereignty of god is that he gave man choice and that choice cannot be changed man will always be a creature of choice always and that was clearly explained in genesis we see that's what happened to adam 
he had choice and he made a choice god yesterday i said something here god is not in control of everything did i say that yesterday god is not in control that arm robber who just broke into somebody's house just now to steal is not under the control of god so god is not in control of everything but god has everything figured out why because god gave man a choice when you give somebody a choice you are no more responsible for his decisions are you are you with me here yeah whatever you desire to do with yourself is your choice it's part of god's sovereignty he permits man to be able to make a choice he permits man to be able to make a choice take note of this the concept of sin explains god's sovereignty and the reason why i'm getting to this technical is because i have had people say why do god allow bad things to happen to good people you say very nice man very nice a man that is blessing people has 300 people on his scholarship every month he pays their school fees builds houses and orphanages all of a sudden cancer hits him and he's dead and all of these 150 people's lifeline is cut off why god why he's a wonderful person praying for his beloved somebody he loves very much prays with all his heart that that person will not die and the person dies in his very face and he goes god why why do you allow bad things happen to good people i was preaching in london in a church when i got finished teaching and talking about god's character the nature of god oh i love intelligent minds there were some young people in that service who are scientifically oriented their brains they i like people whose brains are awake even god likes people that are intelligent intelligence is a choice it's not a gift you didn't hear that intelligence is a choice dumbness is a choice illiteracy is a choice okay mumusiousness is a choice no i'm not joking it's a choice it's part of the choice it is part of the choice i'm not joking it's part of the choice and i like guys and i these young boys were in the service i was teaching they were writing notes and in their brain they were calculating what they have been taught over the years about god and they were checking it what i was teaching as soon as i got through with the service on my way out of the service the young boys blocked me at the gate they say excuse us sir we have questions we are students we need clarity we need clarity sir so i say what is your question they said did you say that god was not responsible for adam's sin i said yes he said no we can't understand when god created adam didn't god know that adam will sin i said god knew then why did god allow him they couldn't understand that why will god allow adam when he knows that adam will sin and if he sins it will affect the plan of god for him and life will be bad for him why will god allow him to sin well it's explained very simply god made man a creature of choice man is not a robot god is not holding the remote control to determine man's action god gave man the, the the ability to make a choice man is a free moral agent that explains the sovereignty of god the concept of sin okay what god says to adam through the uh, uh, the revelation of moses i said before you life i said before you death i said before you blessing i said before you cursing the choice is yours but i advise you choose life that it may be well with you and man says no i'm not going to choose life why will i choose life i don't trust you i choose death now you can't hold god responsible for that choice that man made consciously I'm teaching here so if bad things happen to good people god is not responsible god is not responsible 
God is not responsible. Genesis 2.16, put it up. Let's get into this. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That automatically exempts God. That automatically explains that God is not in control of everything. Just as scripture we read explains that God is not in control of everything. Because if God was in control of everything, Adam will not misbehave. Meaning that God cannot cause anybody to sin. God doesn't cause people to sin. But God permits man to sin. How did he permit man to sin? By giving man the ability to choose. That was permission. That was permission. That choice was God's permission for man to make his decisions. And take responsibility for his decisions. That choice there. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So both actions are dependent on on that man but the decision the action and the outcome james 1 13 watch carefully we're going to read something real technical here let no man say when he is tempted i am tempted of god for god cannot be tempted with evil neither tempted he any man neither tempted he any man god does not tempt anybody Somebody said, God is trying me. You are too small. If God try you, you will fail woefully. God tries nobody. God tempts nobody. He does not tempt people. Somebody said, oh, this temptation is too much. Maybe God wants to test my strength. God does not. Which among you parents? Which among you parents? will use a car to test the strength of your child child lie down let me drive on you and see how strong you are so that i can test you no parent will do that so god doesn't test you he loves you no parent will use will use uh, evil to test his child let no man say when i am tempted i'm tempted of god for god tempts nobody so let's can i hear you turn to your neighbor and say to your neighbor god doesn't tempt anybody can i hear it very loud he doesn't tempt anybody read for me verse 14. but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed next verse then when lust hath conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death so god doesn't tempt people God is not responsible. God does not inspire sin. God was not behind Adam's transgression. So who was behind Adam's transgression? Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. Sin is so komai. That's the Greek word sin is so komai into the world meaning a foreign object that was not there was introduced into the planet by man by man god doesn't tempt any man but every man is tempted when he is drawn of his own lust god tempts nobody but every man is tempted getting blessed tonight every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust what is lost desire 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 look at verse verse 16 of that james chapter 1 do not err, my beloved brethren. Don't get into error. Don't err by saying things you cannot explain. Why is it that God has allowed me to suffer so hard? No, do not err. 
I've been fasting, I've been praying and seeking God for a revival. I have developed ulcer. Why will God allow me to develop ulcer when I am praying for the work of God to progress? God is not responsible for your ulcer. Your pride and illiteracy put together produce a product inside you called ulcer. God is not. And there are a lot of religious people that are carrying ulcers in the name of fasting. Why are they fasting? To prove a point. <laughs> Somebody, I heard a man of God somewhere say, God is proving a point. God is proving no point. God, there's no point God wants to prove to anybody. He proved his point 2,000 years ago. When Jesus died, God proved his point. What point? For God so loved the world that he gave. That giving of Jesus was the point God proved. He has finished proving it. He's not proving anything anymore to anybody. If you like, accept what he has done. If you like, reject what he has done. God does not have inferiority complex. God does not have complex problem. He doesn't have to impress anybody. He doesn't have to make anybody, you know, look up to him like some superhero. Bible say, what if some don't believe? Will their unbelief make the word of God of none effect? He said, God forbid. Yeah, let all men be liars. And let God alone be through you. Believe God is for yourself. You don't believe God is for yourself. Leave that in. Teaching good tonight. Do not err. God, God allowed me to, 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 to develop, to develop uh, uh, cancer so he can humble me. You? God doesn't produce ca all cancers. He's not the author of cancers. Do not err. Don't your neighbor say, do not err. My beloved brother. Then look at why you shouldn't err. Verse 17. Read for me, girl. Verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good gift, every perfect gift, gift, Doria, that's a, the that's a Greek word. It means unconditional. I mean, a gift that is without condition. Every gift that comes from God does not have condition, it's freely given. No condition is good and is perfect. Let me ask you a question. Is cancer good? Is cancer perfect? Is ulcer good? Is ulcer perfect? Is poverty good? Is poverty perfect? So it's not from God. You know, you hear some Christians say, I'm going through the wilderness. God is taking me through the wilderness. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow to where? what is god doing in the wilderness what does god have in the wilderness he will leave a city with people that he loves and carry you to the wilderness you don't know god yes, sir. he doesn't take you to the wilderness jesus already went to the wilderness 40 days in the wilderness that was the price for wilderness life. When he finished, he came out and defeated Satan. It was you defeating Satan. It's substitutionary sacrifice. Jesus didn't need to defeat Satan for himself. Satan is too small. But because he had to wear your shoes and do it on your behalf, he humbled himself. And he did it well. Meaning you did it well. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Huh. Religion is wicked. Mm, religion is wicked. Look, man has a desire. Man has a choice. Man was made a creature of choice. In the day God made man, he made him with desire and gave him the freedom to choose. From the first day, man was made he came to this world with a desire and with freedom to make his choice. Meaning that the temptation of Jesus was on purpose. Huh? 
That temptation of Jesus was on purpose. What purpose? To prove that Jesus was a man. Because God cannot be tempted. God cannot be tempted. Since Jesus was a man and every man is tempted. How many people are tempted? Every man. So if Jesus was a man, he too must be tempted. Because God cannot be tempted. It was to prove his humanity to establish the fact that he was a complete human with desires with desires and ability to make choices let me take you memory lane when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, didn't he pray what was his prayer i don't want the cup take the cup away father i don't want this cup i want this cup to pass i don't want to take it that's his desire his desire is he doesn't want the death but after insisting on his desire he submitted his desire he said not as i will now i submit your will be done to establish that he didn't die by force he died by choice it was voluntary death he looked at your face he thought of you and said i must die this dead because if i don't die this dead they will have to die it and they don't have the resources to die the dead but i have the resources i have to die he made up his mind on your behalf the songwriter says when he was on the cross he had me on his mind he was thinking of me he was thinking of me glory to god somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah look at hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast our profession next verse for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin yet without sin he was tempted in all points he was tempted in all points meaning that desire is a characteristics of humanity desire belongs to humanity anybody that is a man will have desires desires which god in his sovereignty cannot change as sovereign as god is if you say today you don't want to read your bible he cannot force you okay let me ask you a simple question an intelligent question what's the will of god uh, what's the will of god for all men and to be saved and to come to prove that that was his desire what did he do he became a man and died to make that desire backed with action is that true but has everybody accepted salvation why doesn't god in his sovereignty compel people to do that because man has choice and god cannot override your choice no matter how sovereign he is meaning that god does not take responsibility for your decisions honey remember the story ken hagen told of the brother that was addicted to cigarette the brother smokes and he's been trying to stop smoking cigarette and he could not stop smoking cigarette so he came to the church with a secret cigarette and his packet of cigarette to the pulpit and he said father i don't want to smoke it i don't want to smoke it again but if you don't want me to smoke it too take this packet take the stick if you don't take this stick and packet it means you want me to smoke it <laughs> take the packet he kept standing the packet was still in his hand the stick was still in his hand and in his mind god wants me to continue you know that's how many people think god is father if you want me to travel let rain fall rain will just start falling you travel and die ah! but he even prayed and god confirmed it with what with rainfall you don't know that satan operates in the air in the atmosphere and he can make rain fall 
God doesn't speak to us through these fleeces. He speaks to us in our hearts. Because Satan has no access to our hearts. Glory to God. I told you the story of the brother who said, Father, any sister that I meet in church today, today is Sunday. The first sister I will see in the service, that is my wife. True story. He came to church. This was in Joss. Sunday morning, very early, stood up, showered, dressed up. Came to church. As he was arriving the door of the church, there is this sister in the church that doesn't have legs. So she uses wood to carry herself. As he was arriving, that was the sister that was arriving. He said, I bind you, Satan. Father, this one is not part of the plan. <laughs> is she not a sister? And you say the first sister, why are you binding? <laughs> say the blood of Jesus. No. He said, I didn't see her. I didn't see her. He went back. <laughs> God is not mocked. Some of you said, the moment I open the door, the first thing I meet outside is the will of God. So as you open the door, a rat is sitting down and doing like this. <laughs> The will of God is not seen in objects. The will of God is seen in a person. Jesus is the revelation of the will of God. To know the will of God, look at Christ. I'm teaching here tonight. The will of God is seen in a man. He's seen in a person. The person of the Christ. He's the revelation of the will of God. So God gave man desires. Nothing will change man as an object of choice. Not even his salvation. Even after you are born again, you still have choices. Even after you are born again, you still have choices. It was by choice you came to the service today. It is by choice you are watching me on Facebook right now. It is by choice you are watching me on Kingdom Life Network. If you don't want to watch me, you change channel. Nobody kept you on Kingdom Life Network by force. It's choice. Nobody brought you to my Facebook page out of the over 2.5 billion people on Facebook. It is your choice that brought you to Abel Damina's page. There are even some of you that are there that have been fighting what I'm preaching. You are just there to see if you will see something else that you will use to attack me. You are there and I'm seeing you right now. But even though that is your intention, nobody forced you. You, you opened the page and you looked for Abel Damina and you pressed play on the video and you're watching. It's choice. Man. 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 One of the characteristics of man is choice. Even after you're born again, you make choices. So that is why if a believer makes the choice, Tiba Lakatona, the choice, if a believer makes the choice to die young, God is not responsible. You see that? Yeah. But he was on fire. He was a brother on fire for God. Why will he just die like that? Were you there when he made choices? Because even after salvation, man is still a creature of choice nothing changes that nothing changes that that you're born again doesn't mean you, any, anything you choose now will be okay no that is why now you have to be led by the spirit of god number one number two you have to be educated so that you know what is good for you and what is not good for you and education here is in every area of life do you know that even when it came to marriage peter advised the married brothers in church he said deal with your wives according to knowledge don't deal with your wives in tongues deal with them according to knowledge understudy your wife understudy her temperaments understudy her mannerisms understand study her composition understudy her her pattern of thinking so that when you relate with her you know where two of you can meet to avoid friction in the home don't fast and pray just study her and you will have a happy home unbelievers don't even know how to pray their marriages are good some of them because choice is the characteristics of all of humanity 
even after you're born again. I'm teaching good tonight. Don't be waiting for God. God has already given you resources in Christ. Use them and make right choices. Somebody's not hearing what I'm saying. So desire is a character in all humanity. Somebody says, God does what he pleases. God has given us the choice to determine what we want, whether it pleases him or not. Whether it pleases him or not. Whosoever believes is the right of humanity. And when you make the choice, it is respected in Christ Jesus. The difference between the believer and the unbeliever is that in Christ, the work is done. We have self-control in Christ Jesus. Because in Christ, the work is done. So when you are in Christ, you have self-control. It's one of the character of being born by the Spirit. When you are born of the Spirit, one of the fruit of the Spirit that is manifested by the source of your birth is self-control. That's why you can make a choice but not hastily you can control yourself until you have done all the thinking through before you conclude the choice yeah you check it all before you make the choice you are not a victim you know things will not just happen well just just like that you just make choices anyhow without thinking no You've been given the ability to control yourself. First Corinthians 10, 12 to 13. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is as common to man. Temptation, but wait. Temptation is common to man, not to Christians. So let me ask you, are Christians men? Okay, so temptation is common to man. Let me also ask you, are unbelievers men? So both Christians and unbelievers are tempted. Such as is common to man. But watch this. Read on. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? But God, will, God is faithful. Yes, go ahead. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. With the temptation, he will make a way of escape. That means one of the things you will enjoy in Christ is endurance. The ability to endure and the ability, no matter how tight it gets, you will find a way to walk your way out. No matter how bad. Somehow, somehow, the Holy Ghost will not leave you in a tight corner. Somehow, somehow, he will order your steps. You know, when you go to London or America or the Western world, they have the GPS. Is it the GPS? When you want to go somewhere, you just type where you want to go. And there's this girl inside your car that will start talking to you. Five minutes from now, make a turn. Two, 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 two kilometer away, make another turn to the right. You know, the girl will just be directing you. That's all you need to get to where you're going. But sometimes you miss the turn. When you miss the turn, the girl doesn't say, stupid man, you have come to your end. <laughs> no, the girl doesn't say that. If, if human beings have sense to plan that, is it God? That will be stranded. If you have missed a turn, keep moving. There's another turn. You didn't hear that. The lady will tell you, okay, keep moving. Two meters from here, make a left. She will take you through an alternative route and connect you to the original route. God is faithful. 
he will not allow you to be tempted above what you can handle and even with the temptation there's an alternative route Zabatonakata. the man in Christ can never be stranded if, if, you're, if you're that man can I hear a shout I can never be stranded there is always a way he will with the temptation make a way of escape that you may be a Thank you, Jesus. I say thank you, Jesus. The difference between you and the unbeliever is that in Christ the work is done. The ability of God in the new creature is called self-control. It's God's ability. Self-control. The love of Christ in the believer constrains him. The love of Christ. Resident on the inside of the believer. His desire does not control him anymore. The desire of the believer doesn't control him anymore. What controls the believer is the nature of God. So sometimes his desire is to go this way. But his nature tells him no. He listens to his nature. Not his desire. The unbeliever's nature is... is united with his desire he has no other way hallelujah so divinity lives in humanity that brings control so in God's sovereignty he gives man a choice Sin is God's permission, not his commission. Sin is God's permission, not his commission. First John chapter 3 verse 8, put it up for me. He that committed sin is of the devil. Yes. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Yes. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Next verse. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Anybody that is born of God does not commit sin. So for somebody to say that the preachers of grace are giving people a license to sin, he doesn't even know grace and he doesn't even know what preachers of grace are preaching. They asked Paul, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul said, how? How? how how shall we that are dead we are dead to sin how shall we live in sin any longer when a man dies from this earth does he go back to his old school to lecture apostle gift they said this man died last friday they they buried him on saturday sharp sharp sunday morning they say he came to the class and he taught geography it doesn't happen it can never happen dead men are dead born again is dead to sin you couldn't have been born again if you didn't die to sin no you can't be born again and alive to sin it is not possible two natures cannot live in one man He can't live in one man. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that as many of us as we are baptized into Christ, we are baptized into his death. Born again is a baptism into Christ and by identification is a baptism into his death. That's the power of the new creation. Hallelujah. Put it up for me. Read for me, girl. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in His nature. That seed is his nature. Ah. Being born again. First Peter 1.23. Being born again. Not of corruptible seed. He cannot commit sin. Because of his seed. You are born again, not of corruptible sperma. 
sperma the word seed is the word sperma the word sperma is where english have their word sperm sperm means dna this man carries the dna of god he cannot sin just like a man cannot be pregnant a born again man cannot commit sin that thing that makes a sinner sin is not in the born again man can somebody shout i can i cannot commit sin say it again louder now some of you are not able to shout because you just remembered some things even when you mistakenly seen you are not committing sin it was a mistake you acted outside your territory you pretended you acted a script that was not yours and the moment you discovered that script was not yours you took your leg out of the script which is what you know which is what happens to any believer he said cannot sin because his seed the sperma being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god put that scripture back for me that first job whosoever is born of god does not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of god he cannot sin because he is born of god next verse in this the children of god are manifest and the children of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of god neither he that loveth not his brother god does not commit sin so the people that he produces does not commit sin if you are born of god you do not commit sin hallelujah first john 5 18 we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not question are you born of god yes. lift your right hand and shout i am born of god i sinneth not and the woman told the story as a roundup before I read that conclusion of when he started preaching grace in his church. I don't know those of you that have read that story. When he started preaching grace in his church and he told members of his church, God loves you. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you less. God loves you unconditionally. And even the way you are with all your shortcomings, he loves you and he has accepted you like that. Oh, it was liberty. Freedom came to the church. And he said the following Sunday, some elders in his church came to church with pipe. You know pipe? Pipe, not cigarette, pipe. And they gathered in front of the church and they were blowing the team. They were having a nice time. And some of his... Some of the elders came to him and said, Andrew, you have destroyed your church. You have destroyed your church. Look at what you're preaching. Look at the kind of thing it has produced. Your elders are smoking. And Andrew said, go and ask them which of them started smoking last Sunday. <laughs> we need to see who among them started smoking last Sunday. He said, these people were smoking all along, but they were pretending. They were hiding it, but grace has brought them out so that we can treat the matter. Yeah. There's no hypocrisy in grace. Hypocrites are in the law. Under grace, no hypocrisy. Grace allows you to come the way you are. Let me ask you a question. A man that goes to a doctor and the doctor says, remove your cloth. He said, no, treat me like this. He said, remove your cloth. I have to examine. He said, no, treat me like this. He will never be treated. That's why hypocrites are never treated. They are never treated. They are perfect in pretending. They have perfected the act of pretending. But grace tells you, anyhow you come, God has already accepted you. He is not accepting you based on performance. He's accepting you based on Christ. Once you hear that, you just come without hypocrisy. And because you came without hypocrisy, you are open to Christ. Christ begins to perfect you. I'm teaching good here. I don't have time for testimonies. You need to know how many testimonies we have of people addicted, people in all kinds of sins, 
just by watching and listening to these messages the addictions are broken a guy told me i was an elder i won't call the name of the church 20 years 20 years of masturbation 20 years i lay hands on people i minister to people i join to do crusade with all the ministration i go back and i do masturbation he said but as i began to watch you teach on kingdom life network i'm not even in your church just through television after a while i forgot that i used to masturbate it was not intentional i didn't plan it just the word of god entered me and the appetite changed when you begin to eat christ when you begin to feed on christ your appetite starts changing it's not pretending no 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 it is the power that comes with the nature of a regenerated man shout i hear you the man said i'm free the addiction is gone and many of them many i don't have time for testimonies because testimony is not the gospel no time for testimony testimony is not the gospel the gospel is the message of christ but we have many all over the place all over the place some are not even afraid ashamed they go on my page and they write it openly for people to read they write it openly for people to read on my page and how can you say that grace gives people license to see when grace is liberating people leave us alone stand up let's close this service if you want to help us and we know that's right leave, leave us alone have you told them you have told them to leave you alone leave us alone leave us alone you hypocrites hypocrites leave us alone let me tell you the truth this message will swallow the entire world and this message will empower the church this message will um, position god's people in a place where satan will see a believer and start running away somebody shout i hear you somebody shout i hear you lift your right hand and shout i am born of god the nature of god is in me i cannot sin say it again i cannot sin my appetite has changed by the word of god see a believer that is still playing with sin is one thing he has not set his affections on the word of god that's why he says set your affections on things that are above not on things beneath where christ is seated at the right hand of god when your affections are set on christ when you see jesus your appetite begins to change it begins to change it begins to change it may not be overnight but it will be changing after a while you will see that you're not where you used to be after a while you will see that you're not where you used to be it will not be overnight but you will see it progressing i'm teaching here many of us that are here today we are not where we used to be we have made a lot of progress in christ and there's no hypocrisy about it we are just ourselves it is because we are ourselves that's why they keep accusing us of license to sin because we are not pretending like them if we are pretending like them they will not even be able to say anything because they won't say anything to say but they even with their pretense there is leakages of diverse manners because they are trying to prove a point they are trying to impress god we have nothing to impress god about before we were anything he died for us god commended his love to us us in that while we were yet sinners a man that saw you as a sinner what are you do, what, how, how will you be thinking of impressing him what is there to impress him he has seen you in your worst that's nothing to pretend about he just come to him the way you are and he enables you to overcome the weaknesses somebody is not shouting hallelujah we all with open face how many of us how many of us we are with open face beholding the glory of god we are in a mirror what happens to us we are changed from where glory to glory as by the spirit of god 
I prophesy over this house on television, on the internet, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice. Reign in righteousness. Reign in righteousness. Reign in victory. Reign in the finished work. In the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare what Christ has done. All that Jesus has done on your behalf. You will enjoy the fullness of it. In the name of Jesus. And I decree that the nature of God has overshadowed you. Overtaking your life. In the name of Jesus. Lift your right hand and say with me. I am born of God. The seed of God. Gave back to me. That is my nature. The DNA of God. I cannot sin. Because. I am born of God. I thought somebody would shout a living amen. Well, if you believe it, go ahead, clap, shout, scream, make some noise. Give him praise in the building. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a word today. Please don't adjust yourself and don't go away. Just stay with me patiently. You know, the word of God comes to give us light and the entrance of his life, of his word, give it light. And that light shines in darkness. And darkness can...